The Plasma Nut Effect is an effect which occurs in mixtures of granular particles. When a mixture of granular particles is shaken, the bigger particles tend to rise to the top. This segregation even takes place when the bigger particles are denser. This is an effect every person who eats nut mixes or cereals on a regular basis will recognize. In this demonstration you see the walnut at the bottom of the cylinder and is covered by butter beans. When you start to shake the cylinder you will notice that the walnut rises from the bottom of the cylinder to the top. When the walnut has reached the highest position it remains on top. Now look at the effect where the particle size difference is not so big. Here peas and butter beans were used. As you look you will see that the bigger butter beans again rise to the top. When a container is filled at equilibrium with the bigger particles on the bottom, the potential energy will be minimal. When you shake the container, one would expect the system to go from a non-equilibrium state to the equilibrium state. Yet, counterintuitively, the system moves in the other direction. The question is, how does this effect happen? There are two primary mechanisms for this effect. The first one is segregation by percolation. In this process, a gap is left under jumping big particles that can be filled by small particles, so that after the big particles have settled back down, they happen to be at a higher position than before, as you can see in the image. Here you can see a demonstration of this mechanism. From the size difference alone, it is clear that the small particle possesses a higher probability of filling this void than does the larger. Contrarily, it would be difficult for the bigger particles to fill in the gaps left by jumping smaller particles. This mechanism occurs during stirring, shaking, vibration or when pouring the particles into a heap. The demonstration shows that over time the smaller particles tend to end up on the bottom, whereas the bigger particles end up on top. The second primary mechanism is granular convection. Until now we have ignored the effect of boundaries on velocity distributions. Here you can see a demonstration where you can see that the particles close to the wall move downwards while the particles in the middle of the box move upwards. In this video the same effect is visible when you follow the butter bean in front while you see the other butter beans move upward through the middle of the cylinder. From the demonstration and this video it is clear that the side walls play a major role in setting up granular convection currents. Moreover, the shape of the container has an important impact on the direction of the flow near the wall. This can be explained in terms of differences in the shear friction encountered by particles during the up and down part of the vibration cycle. The hypothesis is that the friction would be stronger on the upward cycle because particles are more compressed against each other at the side walls. On the other hand, the friction may be smaller on the downward cycle because particles are much more loosely packed and therefore the shear friction is much less. By changing this boundary condition, it is even possible to create a reverse Brazel knot effect. For example, by using a cone instead of a cylinder. This shows that the Brazel knot effect is much more complicated than the two primary mechanisms discussed. Actually, there are many other effects involved. Currently, there are many competing theories as to which mechanism is the dominant force behind the effect. Moreover, there are also varying opinions of the relative importance of interstitial air pressure vibration amplitude and frequency, density of particles, geometry of the objects, and the direction of vibration.